Business alert, Roaring Kitty quietly scratching higher this entire week. One of trader Keith Gill's favorite stocks, yeah, he is Roaring Kitty. GameStop seeing five consecutive days of gains. Game is up about 6.7% over the whole week and uh, over the last two days it has just gone pretty dramatically higher and right now it's adding about one percent at the moment okay let me just look at the market cap i love doing that okay just to annoy charlie gasparino nine billion dollars okay just saying Yes, GameStop has been quietly moving higher this week. We've seen a lot of bullish action in the derivatives market this week, including multiple large call by orders on multiple strikes and multiple expirations. Many people are wondering if any of that buying is coming from Keith, aka Roaring Kitty. Additionally, this week, GameStop director Larry Chang purchased 4,140 more shares of GME stock. And of course, company insiders only buy stock for one reason. They have conviction in the company, and they believe the company's stock will be more valuable at some point in the future. Otherwise, they wouldn't be buying. So that is encouraging to see. I also want to share this post from Larry over on X because I thought it was very interesting. Larry often speaks in generalities over on X as he is involved in multiple businesses. That being said, considering Larry is now a director at GameStop, and considering GameStop's substantial cash position, this post is very relevant to GameStop right now. Larry posted, quote, the balance sheet doesn't have to be spent because taking calculated risks doesn't have to entail consuming capital. Capital can serve as a backstop, enabling a company to take risks that may result in capital consumption if they fail, but may result in capital accumulation if they succeed. So at first glance, it would appear that GameStop may use its roughly $4 billion in cash as a safety net, or a backstop, as Larry calls it. Now with the extra capital on the balance sheet, company leadership can breathe a sigh of relief as bankruptcy is completely off the table, and the extra capital should give them the confidence needed to take more calculated risks moving forward. I'm not sure what that will look like specifically. As I mentioned in previous videos, GameStop recently had a job listing for a director of Global Treasury who would help find and advise on potential investment opportunities. And last I checked, that position was no longer listed on GameStop's career website. So it's possible that the position was filled. Personally, I think it is very doable for GameStop to invest a portion of its capital and then use the profits from said investments to help offset the company's slight losses. But based on Larry's post, it sounds like perhaps they don't want to use the capital for that right now because he says, quote, the balance sheet doesn't have to be spent because taking calculated risks doesn't have to entail consuming capital. So maybe that's a clue about what GameStop intends to do with the capital. But then again, Larry is involved with multiple businesses at the moment, and he is speaking more so in generality here. So take it as you will. I'm very interested to find out how graded card sales are going at GameStop. I have seen so much online recently of people trading in or purchasing graded cards from GameStop. Additionally, GameStop's web traffic seems to be steadily moving higher based on the data from May and June. I wonder how much of this additional traffic is from collectors who just recently found out about GameStop offering graded cards. GameStop is now selling graded Pokemon cards, sports cards, Magic the Gathering cards, etc. They also offer special controllers and other unique physical items that are difficult or even impossible to find at other retailers. With GameStop pushing forward into the collectibles market, I'm interested to see if they will bring back the GameStop NFT marketplace and player at some point, given the SEC's more favorable stance toward Ethereum lately. Regardless of that, I want GameStop to survive, thrive, and reinvent their business model in a meaningful way. It makes me very happy to see GameStop improving. GameStop now has solid leadership, narrowing losses, and roughly $4 billion in cash. It's crazy to think that just a few years ago people were seriously talking about the potential of GameStop going bankrupt and disappearing. And now that is completely off the table. GameStop isn't going away anytime soon, which is a very good thing. I want GameStop and every other legitimate company that has been wrongfully targeted by malicious short sellers to survive and make it for the sake of their employees, customers, and shareholders. With this in mind, it makes me very happy to see GameStop doing well and improving. At the end of the day, what individual investors want is simple, and nothing we're advocating for is beyond the realm of reason. Individual investors want a free, fair, and transparent stock market. We want large institutions to be held accountable for their actions. We want individual investors to have access to the same real-time data from exchanges better private feeds, which is currently only available to the large firms on Wall Street. We want short sale data to be reported in real time. We want an end to excessive amounts of failures to deliver, and we want entities who fail to deliver on their obligations to be held accountable. We want an end to payment for order flow due to the insane conflicts of interest it creates. There's a reason why so many other countries have already banned it. We want the exchanges to be not-for-profit utilities as they once were. The exchanges becoming for-profit ventures has created so many conflicts of interest at the expense of individual investors. We want increased competition among market makers. And we want all of individual investors' orders to be routed directly to lit transparent exchanges rather than opaque alternative trading systems known as dark pools. Ultimately, it's simple. What we want is a stock market that offers a truly level playing field for all investors. Please leave a like on this video so more people will see it. And while you're down there, please consider subscribing. It's free, and you can always change your mind. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.